It's called atmospherics, but it, what it really is is the manipulation of the store environment. And retailers make a conscious effort to, in a sense, position the color, the sound, the lights, the music of a store in order to entice us into the store, and once we're in the store, to keep us in the store. And a lot of times we as consumers think that this is all very natural, but it's really a conscious effort on the part of retailers using a lot of psychology in order to to manipulate their environment. If you think about the music that's played in supermarkets, they play very slow paced, slow tempoed music. And the reason for that is we, in a sense, walk to the pace of the music. And so if the music is very slow, consumers are going to be walking slower, staying in the supermarket more. And what they found is the longer you're in the store, the more money that you're going to spend. It's different in a restaurant, though, and a lot of times the more expensive restaurants are going to be playing slower music, not just to keep us in the, the restaurant to eat more, but they found that the liquor bill, and, and we tend to drink a little bit more uh, when the music is slower paced. However, the, it's contrary when you're in a fast food place, you're going to hear very fast paced, excited music because it's a fast food restaurant and they want you in and out. That's also why they have the seats in the fast food restaurants, very uncomfortable because they do not want us hanging around and lingering. A lot of times you'll smell chocolate chip cookies or pizza in a mall and that is also pumped in. Uh, it's, not it's not natural, it's artificial smells as well. Color is also an interesting phenomena. They found that the bright warm colors such as reds and yellows draw our attention and get us excited and so that's why you're going to see a lot of the exteriors of buildings being very bright and very warm. But once you're in the store they want you to feel comfortable and relaxed so you're going to see more subdued cooler colors such as the blues and greens. They want you to be relaxed and they want you to open your pocketbook and spend more money. As consumers, I think we need to be aware of the atmospherics. It's interesting how it's really incorporated into so many stores. I found that some of the car dealers have included um, aquariums in the stores, in the, in, in the rooms where the dealer takes you as, as they're trying to finally close uh, the car deal. And they found that aquariums are used in that situation because it's very calming and soothing to the buyer and it puts you in a more relaxed mode when this is usually a very tense situation for consumers. As consumers, I think if you're just aware of these different atmospherics and manipulations that retailers are using, perhaps you won't get sort of swept up by the moment and um, tend to spend more than perhaps you had actually anticipated on spending. So advice to consumers, just be cautious of a lot of the tips, techniques, tools that, that consumers are using. Advice to consumers, be careful about a lot of the tricks or techniques that retailers are actually using because what they're attempting to do is get us in the store and keep us in the store as long as possible. An example of some atmospherics, some companies that have done very good in atmospherics, is the Disney store, uh, where they really have it set up so that way it's very enticing, not only for children, but for uh, adults. And also Victoria's Secret, um, Athlete's Foot, a lot of these stores that are, in a sense, trying to really create a different world and a different environment and take us away from the humdrum uh, activities and put us into a different mood. That's what atmospherics is all about. It all started in 1977 with what they thought was going to be a very obscure movie. The offer was initially made to M&M's and they turned it down and Reese's Pieces agreed to be a part of this movie. What they agreed to be a part of is E.T. gobbling up the pieces of, of Reese's Pieces. And in a sense the rest is history. This was the very first time that uh, a product was actually placed in the movies and was such, had such an important impact on the overall movie itself. Reese's was very successful with this product placement and they ended up increasing their sales by about 85 percent. And even to today, over 15 years later, you're still seeing that effect of the, the placement of this product in the movie. It's called product placers and many, many companies have been extremely successful at putting their products in TV shows or movies. They estimate that about, they, 
they estimate that about $1 million is spent per week on what they call product placers. Most companies are spending between twenty-five and $50,000 to put their product in a TV show or a movie, but it, it's been estimated that it's gone up to sometimes over six figures. So you can see that it may cost a significant amount of money for these manufacturers to put their products in the movies and on TV, but it really has a strong impact on consumers. Why is this type of promotion so successful? Consumers like to see that their products, the products that they're brand loyal to, are being used by some of the stars. It feels very natural when you watch Jerry Seinfeld um, eating crackers out of a box or Elaine drinking uh, some kind of bottled water. And we can relate to that very well because these people, these stars, in a sense come into our home all the time and we become very success, very, we become very comfortable with these, these uh, stars and they become part of our family. So when we see these superstars using these products, it has a strong impact on consumers. I think we're going to be seeing more and more manufacturers using product placement because it is very, very effective. As consumers see some of these superstars, whether it's on TV or in the movies, using products, everyday products, it in a sense brings it to life. It's not a typical advertisement or promotion, something that's very artificial, but it seems very natural and as a result has a tremendous impact upon consumers and a lot of times really increases uh, the sales of a particular product. There have been movies such as Wayne's World that has really taken advantage of using these product placers and even made fun of, of the placement of these products in, in, in their movie. So I, I, I think overall consumers are aware that these products are being put in the, the movies and on TV, but um, a, a lot of the, the movies, particularly Wayne's World, has, has poked fun at this phenomena. The reason these product placers have been so successful is because we are really bombarded by so many advertisements and promotions. Everywhere you turn, you're seeing a company splashing their name everywhere. But when you see it in a movie or a TV show, it's very subtle. It's almost subliminal to the point where you may not notice it as a viewer of the show, but subconsciously it, in a sense, registers and may have an impact upon your shopping behavior. And that's why I think we're going to see more and more advertisers using this product placement because it's really a very subtle, low-key um, form of promotion and advertising. Okay. 